In this video, we'll make an interactive vertex displacement effect using Unity's Shader Graph tool. We have a demo project here with the Shader Graph shader and some example game assets from the 3D game kit. If we enter play mode, we can see a sphere which we will apply a shader based displacement effect when we hit the space bar. Of course in your game, you would assign this to some relevant gameplay event. In this video, we'll look at how to create this shader using the shader graph package and integrate the spacebar key press trigger. The goal is to help you understand how to design effects in shader graph and interact with them with your other C -sharp scripts. These assets are available for free download at the link in the description below. The project contains the shader, the script that controls the shader, an example level, a pre-configured lightweight scriptable render pipeline, and an example scene for you to get started with. First, let's look at how to set up Shader Graph and create the shader. We first open the Package Manager and install both the Lightweight Render Pipeline package and the Shader Graph package. To set up the Lightweight Render Pipeline, we need to create a new pipeline asset in the project. To create the pipeline, select Create, Rendering, Lightweight Render Pipeline Asset. We can then activate this pipeline by going to Edit, Project Settings, Graphics, and dragging the Lightweight Render Pipeline asset into the Scriptable Render Pipeline Settings field. If you are following along with the downloaded assets, this step has already been completed for you. Now that the Lightweight Render Pipeline is installed, we can look at creating a new shader graph. Let's create a new graph in our project by selecting Create, Shader, PBR Graph. The PBR Graph allows us to create a new material that interacts with lighting, including shadows and reflections, and has physically based inputs. Once we have created this shader, we add it to a new material and attach the material to a sphere in our example scene. To achieve this effect, we will displace the vertices in our mesh along its normals by changing the output position in the PBR master output node. We will displace by using an add node on the base object position of each vertex. By adding the normal vector to the base object position, we can see all the vertices become extruded, making the sphere appear bigger. To vary this displacement, we will multiply this normal vector displacement semi-randomly by using a simple noise node. When we click Save Asset, we can see in the scene view that the sphere is now displaced based on that simple noise. Next, we will fix the seams by using object space for the simple noise instead of using UV space, and then scroll the displacement map to create a pulsation effect. We simply add a position node set to object to a time node and send it to the UV input of the simple noise node. We can also use a multiply node with the time node to vary the speed of the scroll. To control our displacement, we expose a new shader property in our shader graph. Shader properties allow us to provide inputs to our shader via values entered in the inspector or via our own c -sharp scripts. We will create a new Vector1 property named Amount and change the reference to underscore Amount. The reference field is the string name by which we will access and change the displacement via script. If we do not change this, it will use an auto-generated value. If the string does not match exactly, we'll not be able to address our property via script. We use this amount shader property in a multiply node with the simple noise node before it gets multiplied with the normal vector. This allows us to scale the noise before it's applied to the vertex positions. Now, we can see that the amount variable controls how much we displace each vertex in the mesh. 
To control this amount variable, we have created a C-sharp script called displacement control and attached it to the sphere. This script controls the underscore amount variable by interacting with the property we created in our material, which is assigned to the mesh renderer component. We store a reference to the mesh renderer component in the variable mesh render and declare a new float variable displacement amount. We use a simple lerp in the update function to interpolate the displacement amount variable to the value of zero. We then set the shader variable underscore amount to displacement amount. This will update the shader graph's underscore amount variable, smoothing it over time to zero. We're using Unity's default jump input access, which is assigned to the spacebar, to set the value of displacement amount to one when pressed. Now, when we enter play mode in the scene, we can see that by pressing the spacebar, displacement amount gets set to the value of one and then slowly interpolates back to zero. To create the adjustable glow effect, you will output to the emission in the PBR master node. Let's use a Voronoi noise and multiply it to a color node. This will create a little modulation in the glow effect with some dark spots. Then we use a lerp node with another color node as the base color and use the amount variable in the T input. This will allow us to blend between a base color node and the Voronoi color node using the amount variable. Then we will scroll the glow by using a similar setup as before. We can also add a second layer of glow for additional variation by using a simple noise node scrolled by an additional layer of time and multiplying the two noise outputs together. This gives us a second layer of noise, which adds visual interest. Because this glow effect is adjusted by the amount variable in the lerp node, we can see in play mode that when we press the spacebar, the sphere will activate both effects, vertex displacement and glow, and then slowly go back to its normal state. To add a little extra touch, We've also linked up a simple particle system in the displacement control script. If you'd like to experiment with these features yourself, we have provided the complete project with all assets, meshes, shader, and example scene for you to download at a link in the description below. We look forward to seeing what cool stuff you create with it. Thanks for watching.